The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. I love whistling that tune. The Global Market Pulse. It's very catchy. Thanks for TFNN for providing that music. Here we go. Let's take a look at crude oil. Al, did I say that correctly? I hope so. All right. So what we talked about yesterday, let's just get right into this. We talked yesterday about, you know, we broke down below that thing that I was hoping we'd use as support, and uh, that didn't work out very well. That's what stops are for. But we talked about the next stop down could and should and would be 29.26. Call a little bounce off of there. I mean, this is literally, again, a dollar moving crudel, which is what? 3% move off the bottom there. So, again, this is a great, great example of, you know, them's the breaks. Got to wait until we have some new fences to lean on. And uh, crude oil, as we talked about, this profile kind of edging higher. This is a little bit of a trading opportunity. We, you know, we don't know if crude oil is just going to go to $20. That easily could happen, especially with what's going on in the globe right now. But, you know, uh, a caller yesterday um, called into the show, and, you know, I think the tail end of our conversation really was, God, is the world going to stop using commodities? I mean, the answer to that is no. The population is at almost 7.5 billion people. The carrying capacity of the planet's probably about eight and a half, and then all heck breaks loose. I mean, that's I mean, we're talking about converting a lot of forested land into growing food type of thing. So, again, you know, some of these commodities have been beaten up. Um, they don't have to bounce right now. That's not a good timing tool. What I just said from a fundamental standpoint. But, you know, again, we've pulled back significantly. I'm starting to look at nibbling type areas as we've talked about on crude oil. Um, crude oil. I was really, really bearish all the way down here until recently. And, and um, you know, this is, again, we don't have any long-term indications here of a new profile attempting to appear down here. Um, but we had a lot of, you know, magenta bars in a row. That was on our long-term on our navigator. Um you know, we're starting to see, we started to see on the XLE, and I'll just pull this back up, the XLE. Seems like I talk about crude oil every day. Hope you guys don't mind. Uh, so we look at the XLE, and, you know, there was, you know, some green shoots here. I would like to say this uh, new profile attempting to appear. Got, an, got a, uh, a new bottom down here, 52.69, that we're looking at on the long term. We had broken stride, started kind of catching a bit, a little bit above profiles here for the first time in a long time. And uh, let's see, 20, blah, 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 what is that? 30% move down in the XLE before we started breaking profiles again. So, and again, you know, we, you know, we've, we found some kind of cool opportunities. I did a morning video this morning for, uh, E-Signal and uh, a company called NextChange that was basically around, you know, what sectors are, you know, some of the things to pay attention to. Uh, the XLE uh, talked about yesterday. I mean, we, you know, we talked about this gang of five, if you will. There they are. <laughs> and, you know, why are they a gang of five on the north side? To kind of look at from a positive standpoint, um, they've just been bucking the trend of oil all the way down, and they may have to weather some more of a storm on crude oil heading south. But again, you know, you got that's some really nice little things going on here. Um, we, you know, taking a look at, you know, again, southwestern, a little bit of a pullback, but again, you know, these are the 240s regulating the trade up. Uh, Cabot, again, you know, just <laughs> man, just planing, planing off, not going down as crude oil had kind of taken a hit yesterday um you know these are 
these are awesome relative strength trading signs. And uh, there's really, in my opinion, not a lot of reason to look at a lot of other ones. So um, let's take this sort off and let's just kind of look at, let's see, downtrend. Where are we at? Well, I know it's in here somewhere. Downtrend reversals. It's got green on it. Yeah. Not a lot showing right there right now, looking at the XLA. But uh, that that would indicate things that have been kind of been in a downtrend that are kind of reversing up relative to profiles. All righty. Okay, so going back to our dashboard and going back to our ETF heat grid, what I did the video on this morning, I kind of got sidetracked on all again, was, um, you know, we talked about the XLU in this video. And, you know, again, I mean, okay, it's pretty plain as day that this is – <laughs> an amazingly strong sector and i want to go to our e-signal charts really quick and pull up the xlu even though we could pull it up in the scanner there's no mystery e-signals charts are better than the ones in the scanner but here we go so you know did a video yesterday morning on is it is has this thing gone too far too fast and is it time to take the trade off that was let a fine wine breathe type situation. There were really no signals to do that. And what happened yesterday in the midst of the S&P selling off, all we did is come down and find an area of support and close on the highs. Or actually, now we're printing on the highs again. But, man, I mean, what an insane situation and what a great example of relative strength trading and finding a sector and, you know, kind of latching onto the stocks as we've kind of looked into the sector not the ones like the NRG. I mean, like, okay, let's just look at this one, color-coded red. It's the only one in the XLU on the scanner trading below profiles, and let's look at this so-called dog. Now, this is, again, it, it's got a little bit of a bounce here, higher lows in the XLU, big deal. But this is our weekly view on this, and it's got a little bit of a bounce with the XLU kind of dragging it up, still trading below profiles. If you are in the mindset that you're going to find the cheapest stock and the one that's beaten up the most in the utility sector to try to, you know, hopefully catch a bid on, this is a great example. If you've got better things that you could put on your radar screen, I mean, again, you know, it's it's hard to break a habit of things have gone down too much. This one may, you know ricochet up really quick. Um, you you want to see the green shoots on stuff like this first and. You know, this particular stock, literally, if you're doing some pairs trading, um, you got murdered on this, trying to kind of reversion to the mean, all that stuff that goes on in Chicago at uh, at the Board of Trade. And, and, you know, guys trying to squeeze pennies out of things, and then maybe they get clipped for a dollar. That's – did I just bash Chicago? I think I did. Um, these are – these are things that are really low probability trades, all right? So you want to try to, again, you know, simp this is, you know, kind of trading 101 in my opinion. And you want to try to buy stocks that are strong and, and, and markets that are weak like this and find sectors and then find those opportunities in these sectors. So we'll be right back. is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz Proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And I was kind of dwelling on the uh, XLE again, so I apologize. We're going to go back to the ETF grid and uh, we want to again th here's the uh, the daily kind of ranking as far as breadth rankings um, and again you want to see some kind of red shoots if you will to start thinking about shorting the utilities but man I mean there's really no end in sight right now and uh, you're playing with a volcanic eruption heat sensor type thing i've already explored this that uh, may be very painful to short that but the xlf on the other hand um you know we've kind of talked a lot about yield curves and and you know what financials like it's pretty simple it's not brain surgery <clears throat> the banks can rip you off more to put it mildly um when the yield curve widens so as we look at this and we look at the treasuries, uh, again, I haven't been as, as bullish on treasuries lately as I have been in the past. Great timing, uh, Mr. Logan. But uh, as we, again, we, we try to put lines in the sand and we try to say, you know what? Hey, we gave it a shot. We did what we had to do. And uh, right now, talked about religiously above that 128.28 area, that is <clears throat> okay to be long, not okay to be short. So keeping that in mind and talking about always blocking out one side of the marketplace since the notes and the bonds have kind of eclipsed these areas, um, and without question, that means lower rates, um, we're going to take a look at the XLF. We're going to look at the chart. And as we look at this, you know, again, this is the uh, ETF for the financials. Um, this was kind of on that video I did this morning, too, talking about the seller dweller and the beacon of light, the XOU, um, on the other hand. So, uh, you know, talked about, in fact, not getting – not even remotely trying to go long until we got above 2193. Again, blocking out one side of the marketplace. Okay to be short, not okay to be long until we cross those borders. This is uh, this is an ugly situation, and the market in general doesn't like situations like this. This is kind of, you know financials a lot of times will lead the marketplace. And remember, um, you know this is our daily situation. No new profiles attempting to appear here. So again, you know these notes kind of getting into another level of uh, security on the top side, as Tom would say, top side. Uh, 
the XLF is not liking that. So when you go into the XLF and you try to find opportunities, you know, these are the types of things you're not really completely interested in shorting. Um, something like Chubb. Let me look at this one. And again, I mean, you know, as always, there's not a lot of rehearse to this show. I'm just pulling things up as I see them in the scanner. And, you know, this is the type of, of stock in this particular sector that's showing the relative strength. And I'm just looking at the colors. I'm not even drilling into, you know, uptrend support or any of those custom filters or things like that. I'm just, you know, looking at these. I'm looking at some other eras. eras. I'm looking at some green shoots here. Equix, I mean, you know, th this, is in, this is dumb, to put it mildly, to be shorting something like this in a sector that's getting killed. I'm going to say that again. It's dumb to short stocks that are up like this in a sector that's getting killed. If this sector turns around, these stocks are going to go straight up. Am I making this point too poignantly? I hope you guys are getting the picture. So, again, you know, if you're looking to buy something that's, uh, you know, sitting on the launching pad, basically, um, you want to look at some of these stocks that are holding up um, in the in the XLF. So, you know, if you, if you put a gun to your head and force somebody's forcing you to buy a financial stock, I mean, you've got some plays here. Um, this is one of them. You know, I mean, again, you're going, oh, God, let me buy the high print, Logan. But again, you know, these things turn around. These are the type of the instruments within this sector that are just going to, you know, possibly explode. You guys catch my drift? Did you hear about um, Glenn Fry passing? Man, freaking sad. And there was an awesome special they ran on CNN in the other night about the Eagles. It was, I, it was long. I think they had run it before, but um, man, what a what a cool cool documentary on this guy's. And maybe tomorrow I'll play a honorary Eagles tune on my guitar for you. And whatever ratings this show has had, it will, I will completely kill them by doing that. But that's we take chances on this show, so. Just kidding. Here we go. So let's let's take a look at a couple of the uh, the usual suspects in the commodity world. Just kind of get you up to speed. Here we go. All right. So we're going to take a look at uh, April Gold. And um, again, I've been a little hesitant on buying this thing, which is really, uh, again, you know, there's been zero reasons to short it. That's the good news. But uh, I've been passing on these. I know Tom's been a little bullish on this, which is awesome because you guys have, have caught some, you know bids on this thing but until we get again you talked talked about this we're kind of spinning above here but not showing in my opinion that we want to really stay away from this 1124 1125 area um getting below there will again you know might be a situation especially if we have a close below 1125 area on the, on the uh, april contract to catch a ride down to 1104 but but uh ain't there yet i think we have a caller chuck from uh, new jersey chuck you there yeah i'm looking for db Deutsche Bank. What do you think? What do you think? Is it another Lehman Brothers? <laughs> let me. Uh, let's hope not. Um, let me. Uh, let me take a look at the. Ooh, ouch. Um, you know what? I I don't think that there's another Lehman Brothers on the horizon. But let's take a look at it and just kind of look at it objectively right now. Um, did you catch well, what I was talking? But... Not here, we, but overseas in Europe, we could certainly have another Lehman Brothers. It'd be perfect making, no? Yeah, without question. I mean, I've, I've talked kind of ad nauseum about Europe just being a problem, um, and that's why Europe, I've been... Europe's down 1% today, so we should follow in track, I would say. Yeah, I mean, on, on the U.S. markets? Yeah, yeah we, we have a pop okay. and drop today. Okay, well, yeah, we um, we looked at that 1912, 1918 area on the S and P's as the support area. Now it might be used as resistance. Yeah, I mean, you may be right on that. We'll take a look at the S and P's after this break. But let's talk about Deutsche Bank. TV. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at Deutsche Bank right now. I've got the long term weekly up. Um, no hints of a sign to buy this. You should not have been, you know. Again, I'm being a Monday morning quarterback, but uh, there, there's really been, especially with the XLF doing what it's doing right now and breaking down, and then, 
you know, that kind of being the seller dweller, this has been one of the more weaker stocks. And again, this is a really good example of, of using inflection points in a, in a, in a situation to kind of keep turning the wrench the same way. But you know, what do you do with it now? I understand that's the question. Uh, it looks like pre-market Chuck, we are trading 16 and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. This is our daily situation. Until we get some new profiles attempting to appear or even crossing some borders on our 240s, which means, you know, getting back above them. Hey. I'm sorry. And could you check out uh, Intel, too, because you said buy that a while ago and it hasn't done nothing. Okay, I will uh, I will take a look at Intel. And thanks for calling, Thank Chuck. You. Thank you, sir. Yep. Have a good day. Yep. No problem. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. So to finish up with Deutsche Bank that Chuck was calling about, um, too risky to try to pick a bottom on that yet. We want some kind of borders to be crossed and some new demand areas, bare minimum to even show up. Um, he had asked about Intel on the uh, tail end of it of the uh, of the call he was on. I, you know, I, if if we were talking about Intel back up in the thirty five oh three area and how this was compressing up on the weekly. Um, I can't remember, Chuck, exactly, you know, when we were talking about Intel. Maybe it was back there. Um, you know, you've got to be 
you've got to really be willing to put in, you know, stops in situations like that. And, and it, you know, this was the weekly area. I think this is when we were talking about when we start crossing and, and breaking down on the next time frame down. In fact, we never really got, um, you know, the closes above that weekly that we really needed to, to talk about a big breakout. We got them there and then we got the retest, if you can see this. And I don't remember personally i don't remember saying buy until i mean I, I i i'm a little at a loss here really maybe you can type something into the den but uh you know when we start again breaking down on kind of the regulation of the trade um you got to be looking at that as you know based on your appetite for risk some kind of clear signs that you know we we are not we're not in coordination with uh you know the regulator type time frame environment that we want to kind of use it for those uh, long-term trades but again you know um we never really got that weekly close above and that was concerning on intel okay <laughs> i i get your drift tom all right okay I, I i don't even remember talking about intel but uh well i'd love to know what i might have said if that makes sense and I may have stumbled into the truth again. I'm not sure. So here we go. All righty. Let's take a look at a couple of stocks. This one in particular, Coors, Michael Coors. And I, you know, I don't hate this stock as bad as IBM, but, uh, and I know it's not good to have personal vendettas against companies. I'm the first person that will admit that, but uh, we've had a weekly breakout. We always talk about not dealing with these types of things right before earnings announcements. This can't. This thing could have been in the 20s, and lo and behold, it's in the 50s. All right, so great example. Now, what do you do? So we've obviously broken above profile. So now, you know, this stock, the smart play may be uh, you got a, a little bit of an area between 42.34 and that kind of former resistance remember that former resistance now can act as support as support a lot of times that'll happen larry steve tom david basil everybody else um will tell this tell you the same thing it's kind of a classical technical analysis nomer if you will um so that range up between you know 42 and 34 and 44 is going to possibly act as you know, catching everybody, some euphoric move up, a lot of people are short, uh, may eventually drift down. Here's your short-term numbers on this animal, 47, 49, and 5105 up top. But again, um, if you're thinking about being a long-term investor in, in course, I think you need to sit tight a little bit and wait for a retracement. <laughs> Noted, Mr. O'Brien. All right. Let's take a look at uh, Exxon Mobil, XOM. Little known company, might want to keep it on your radar screen. 7512 pre market here, trading up a little bit. <laughs> uh, this is the situation. Uh, line in the sand, 73.29. That's support on this. Any weekly closes below. This is, you know, again, looking at this in a broad sense, just kind of stepping back and, you know, kind of clearing your head a little bit. Um, profile has edged higher. Uh, crude oil's kind of had some damage again lately. Again, crude oil going to hell in a handbasket again will cause kind of all bets to be off on any type of relative strength. You've got better oil stocks to buy. We're trading 75.12 right now. Upside immediate targets are 78.14 and 84.29. If oil catches a bid whatsoever, a lot of these are just going to, you know, just like last week, I mean, you know, let me uh, pull up ExxonMobil. And again, we had some earnings. We've gotten through the earnings. All we did was kind of get up to some targets at 78.14 before in that general neighborhood reached a high of 77.85. So again, you know, may use this weekly daily unfair low situation between 73 and 29, 74.23. That's kind of your DMZ. Getting below there, you just got to wait. I mean, just take the hit. Boom. It's over. Re-enter. Right now, I mean, you could, you know, Got through earnings, not the uh, end of the world for that one. Um, we're going to take a look at Pfizer really quick. Here we go. <laughs> 
thanks, Larry. Um, I'm responsible fully if crude oil goes down. And um, I'm, I'm accepting that role. So, you know, again, um, there's some great plays in that XLE sector, in my opinion. All, all kidding aside, um, you, you know, you again doing the relative strength thing. If you're if you're thinking, okay, I, I think crude oil may bounce here, um, instead of taking a shot on crude oil, you can kind of like, in my opinion, maybe increase some odds by just moving over into the XLE sector. And if you're, you know, we want to, Larry will tell you this too. I mean, when you're when you're doing trades, you want them when you're wrong, you want them be you want them to be as painless as possible, if possible, if that makes sense. Um, and you know those may be, may be some things to kind of hide in and get a little pop. You know, if crude oil turns around, eh, crude oil goes down. They may go sideways. Theoretically speaking, <laughs> um, I've already got my tickets to go out of the country, uh, John, from Philadelphia. They're they're bought. I can show them to you. I'm not going to show you the exact date or the launching pad of when I'm leaving the country, um, nor will I show the uh, Bureau that. But uh, we will uh, we'll always kind of – I always kind of keep the car pointed out in the parking lot too. You know, it's just a lot quicker way to exit um, in case. <laughs> uh, okay, so getting back to uh, Chipotle here. I want to talk about this one. Man, what a what – a, what a drama, huh? Amazing. And um, here's our weekly. All right. So, okay. All right. So, backing up a little bit. Tom even said he liked to go to this restaurant and eat. And, and I remember that. And um, he's got a very, very bulletproof stomach, obviously. Uh, 40, 494 up top. Is this weekly unfair high and 437 down below? We kind of bounced off of that. Remember, we kind of okay, shorts maybe taken off, new profile appear, boom, it appears last week. Got into that area as a little bit of a trading opportunity. Now, what do you do? We're going to talk about it when we come back because pre market, we're trading 447. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Man, I heard a funny joke last night. Um, <laughs> I said I'm not a member of any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. It's funny to some people. Um, okay, so we're looking at CMG. Here we go. Uh, we talked about you know the the major inflection points, four thirty seven, four ninety four. That's a huge range, but you got to have a huge range for a volatile, crazy situation like this. And um, there's the daily. So again, um, you know, four forty six. You know, I. I I don't, you know, this is completely the wild, wild west with this stock. They could have a news announcement. The thing could be up 10%, 30%, or down 50 um, A lot of people just flat out are not going into this restaurant, and uh, that's a fact. So, again, the numbers are going to, just because of the weirdness of the whole situation, not that they care, they don't care about the company. They just care about not being sick. So, um as you look at this situation, you know, what are their – I mean, I know the stock tries to forecast things, and, and it, but anything can happen with this. My, my suggestion, not advice. We don't give advice on this show. Tom, that's in my contract, by the way. Um, it, it might be something to stay away from. If you want to go in there and kind of roll the dice, pile in. But that's what you're doing, in my opinion. All right. So – uh, here we go. All right. So I want to go back to the currencies a little bit here. And uh, something we've kind of <clears throat> not talked about lately. And we want to look at the uh, the euro situation. Here's our chart on the euro. Again, uh, again, the, you know, this is kind of the, the most boring situation probably for you to watch this. Um, it's like a slow train wreck. Uh Getting above this 109 area is not very attractive to me. I've gotten kind of perturbed at <laughs> how it's, you know, kind of sat here. But, I mean, I'm looking at this, believe it or not, I'm looking at it as it's just gaining some momentum, kind of spinning there, getting compressed, that this thing will ultimately fall to crap. And there's that uh, 108.80 down there. Again, I'm, I'm, this is a little bit higher than what I want to see it to kind of hang on to this thing. So, again, I personally have gotten stopped out of this. Um, Europe is, is, a, is a situation that I don't see getting any better. And I see the currency ultimately re reflecting that situation. Um, we're going to look at the, uh, the yen here, the yen trade. I had a little hope there, kind of spun up there with the negative rate situation as far as the devaluation. Um, come on, chart, pop up here. But uh, came right back down. Uh, that was kind of uh, that was kind of weird to watch that. But, again, um, right back down into support where we kind of used that to get back in the balanced area. 
I'm looking at this, believe it or not, as a little bit of a buy opportunity because, you know, we've kind of gotten back into the balanced area in the long term. And let me blow this up for you. We've gotten back down into the balanced area, bottom of the balanced area, around 119. I'm willing to take a shot on this one for a little bit of a trading opportunity bounce situation. Um, <laughs> and that's the way I'm looking at the, uh, the yen as it continues to get devalued, in my opinion. Let's look at the uh, Canadian dollar. Again, um, this is a situation that we talked about. And let me go back to our weekly here. Uh, had that new weekly profile up here, which was great because we get some new inflection points to pay attention to. Now we know big time support on this, which is, again, the support for the devaluation of the currency is at around 137.59. But, um, you know, my thoughts on crude oil is that we've got a chance to, to possibly, you know, hang around at least above 30. Um, we've got some upside targets around 37 and a half on it. I think you've got some decent risk rewards. And if that can get any legs, as Larry has shown many times and talked about, there's a massive correlation between this currency and crude oil. And uh, that's, the, that's the drill. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, ruble. And again, we had some uh, we haven't looked at this in a while, but uh, you, let me look at this here. Okay, so on our on our weekly, come on chart, Jesus. Okay, there's the uh, seventy eight forty three. Got a new kind of stake in the ground on the upside with this. Remember, if crude oil does anything other than go straight south, we could have this thing finally have a retracement back into some lower inflection point sixty nine mainly. Keep your eye on this one. Um, again, it's trading against the long-term trend up. But again, you've got some things to lean on here when it comes to uh, trading the ruble. <laughs> All right. Okay. We looked at AXP the other day. I just kind of want to revisit this. <clears throat> Man, this was an awesome, fun stock to trade against a specialist in New York back in the day. Tom will probably tell you that. Um before the uh, the machines took over. Okay. Again, financial stock. And this is kind of the worst of the worst. If you can look at this, again, Monday morning quarterback, everybody's always right. But, I mean, there's really, there's, there's you know, zero reason still to look at this from the buy side. And then remember, those notes and bonds are just kind of really looking scary now. Um they should be going higher, actually, based on the market action. But, you know, they're they're trading above profiles, and until they start sinking down below, I mean, I don't I don't really think a lot of these financial stocks um, are gonna are gonna catch too many bids. We got to take a look at the dollar too. Um, this is something now coming back down into that DMZ ninety eight to ninety eight thirty. Right. So now we're kind of really really sitting in an area where you could either kind of double up on some longs. Or if you've been waiting patiently for it to get into a support area, now we're here with stops down below 98. That's the 98, 98, 30 DMZ on the dollar. Looks kind of concerning here that we're back in this area, though. Mm. Hate to see it, actually. But remember to just put your stops in if you're going to play that long game. All right, let's get let's hit the S&Ps really quick. So I uh, talked yesterday um, using that 1912, 240 unfair low and the, the daily unfair high, 1918. Um, talked about it not, not, it's not, not super attractive when we got away from it and then came right back to it. But what do you do with it now? Remember that DMZ now could act as resistance. And I know I'm saying could, would, maybe if, blah, blah, blah. You probably not some rhetoric you really want to hear. But as I look at the, uh, go back in the scanner, um, we're going to have to have some instruments open and populate and start printing to really kind of get an idea on breadth on the opening. I'd really like to see kind of what this, you know, internal structure looks like to really start placing bets now. Um, but again, I mean, we've kind of broken back into a balanced area. We may rattle around here a little bit. Um, there's always seemingly more and more uncertainty coming out. Um, we're going to hit the Shanghai really quick, talking about uncertainty. And uh, as we look at this, there's that breakdown. We talked about this thing really could very easily 
get down to this 2371. The market may be thinking that the U.S. market. We'll be right back, guys. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Um, got about, what, well, four minutes, a lifetime here we go. What I did is I just did a little custom sort and a scanner uptrend support. So I yeah, figure out what was kind of eh, pulling back to some, you know, a little bit of trading opportunity maybe. Uh, looked at Macy's really quick, just kind of picked it out of the pack here. Um, really a cool looking setup, actually. Um, I like how this thing broke out of the weekly. I like how it's kind of spinning around up here, kind of ignoring some market action right now. 40, I mean, if you if you think that these brick and mortar places are, are just – Man, I mean, it's weird how things change, you know? I mean, you don't need a telephone line anymore. I mean, do you need to go into a store and buy anything anymore? I mean, I, I, I seriously think that's a societal problem, not just going places and doing things instead of sitting in front of the, you know, these these kids. I mean, it's, ac it's actually something they've done studies. Um, it's, a, it's a dopamine type uh, trigger is constantly – you know, plug, you know, paying attention to these handheld devices and things like that. It's actually 
you know, heroin like when it comes to that's a whole nother show. I think Nico and uh, Paige could talk about that. That's not my area. But we look at, you know, Macy's. If you believe that some of these things could catch a bit again, these brick and mortars, this is one that's kind of spinning around um, and looking relatively, yeah. <laughs> looking relatively attractive as far as the, the the kind of technical action sitting above weekly profiles okay uh, i want to find something else here that's uh let's see tyco let's take a look at this one um looking at the weekly here again nice little break of stride here got some support 3355 you want to play around with that might not be a bad idea but what i want to do let's go back to my dashboard and um you know, just kind of really just reiterate kind of what's the strong of the strong trading above profiles on both time frames, kind of ignoring some things that might have happened yesterday. And also, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could say, you know what, uh, I want to see what's trading above on the daily. I want to see kind of what really kind of broke out yesterday and got clean and clear of the noise. Um, Mattel, let's take a look at it. I mean, I'm just looking at the color codes and the and the things here. Oh, well. That's that that dog is out of the barn, or the horse is out of the barn. Um, again, had a little breakout here, but again, you know, okay, now it's on your radar screen. Put it in your portfolio. Let's see if we can get a retest of where it broke out, and if the market could drag this back down to that point, and it kind of sits there. If the market goes south, again, we're again in the spirit and the theme of a relative strength trading situation. Um, this is one you might want to pay a little attention to. Um, by the way, if you see those charts that are showing, like on the 60-minute, they're showing, wait a minute, here we go. We're, we're, the timing of some of the closes of, on some of these exchanges, we're still trying to pin down. It's not. It's just a kind of a, a dead space area. doesn't mean anything. So uh, if you can, please ignore that right now. We're working on things like that. Uh, ABBV. Somebody's asking about that. Let's let's just pull it up really quick. A B B V. Sorry, I didn't see that till right right now. Russ, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so pre market looks like we're printing what fifty three. Eh, haven't had a print this morning. I don't know where the stock's opening. Um, got about twenty seconds. So the weekly situation, fifty three twenty is a big number combined with fifty three forty four. Again, this is kind of Custer's last stance for a while on this. you got to probably be willing to say uncle below there if you're looking at it from long side. Guys, thanks. Stay tuned for Larry. Remember, stay tuned for Larry. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.